don't do evil with our psychic abilities. And that's what it's portraying. And psych our psychic abilities are part of our way of life. It's part of our you religion, our art, our science. There was a, a movie that just came out for children called My Little Pony. And in it, there were three bad witches, not three bad Buddhists, and not three bad Baptists, you know, three. <laughs> Yeah. There were three bad witches, and they were cackling and green. You know, we're always green with a wart on our nose. <laughs> Snaggly teeth, you know. Mm -hmm. And yes, oh yeah, I wear black. Black, it, to us, is a tool. So do priests, nuns, rabbis wear black. The high Delhi Lama wears black in one of his highest rituals. Mm -hmm. We've done this, and this is one of the recorded things about witchcraft from the Celtic tribes, is that we wear long black robes. Sharon, you are originally from Salem. Yes, I am. I was born in Salem. Born here? Born here. And through your childhood here, mm -hmm. you always believed in witchcraft? Uh, witchcraft was not brought into my life until I was about 12, 13 years old. And, the word witchcraft. Uh, and as a child, did you develop different uh, powers or? I was brought up Roman Catholic, so, and uh -huh. um, we were taught not to, uh, as a woman, to be silent. I see. So, but did you feel as a child that you had different feelings or different uh, forces? Yes, yeah, so I was a different kind of child. But I was brought up by the women in my family, who were very folklorist, and I guess I hid behind the Roman Catholic Church. On October 3rd, 2018, the pro-LGBT Synod on the Youth started at the Vatican, with a new Mass. During this ceremony, Francis held a strange-looking staff. The backstory is that this staff was given to Francis in Rome on August 11th. According to the CNA, the staff represents Jesus crucified with arms joined by a nail. But one only needs to look at it and realize this staff looks totally bizarre and out of place. Many have commented that it looks nothing like a cross at all. You can barely see what is supposed to be Jesus. I believe this staff is not just a strangely designed cross, as a CNA would have us believe, but actually an occult item. It's a crucifix twisted and bent into the form of a witching staff, specifically something known as a stang. Stangs are long rods with a forked end and often have a screw between the two ends. This is from an article written by a witch. Quote, To give it added function, some witches put a candle between the tines or screw a hook into the wood to hang a lantern from. This is practical as well as representing the light of cunning and wisdom. Notice how Francis' staff has a nail between both ends. This is a print of an occult ritual involving a stang and a cross. The stang represents what is called the horned god, in witchcraft. The Wiccan ritual, I believe that the fork represents the goddess and then the staff, the phallic part, <laughs> represents the god, the horn god. And it's like, it's a very, one of the, it's a very important tool, at least for me and some other witches, because the sting, um, how it forks, what has it has, either the two or the three, um, it represents like the horn god and also like with most deities that have horns and stuff, they seem to be very powerful and very strong. In witchcraft, the horned god doesn't usually represent a particular entity, but instead is more like a title. This is from an article written by a witch. Quote, One quick way to settle a lot of confusion is to remind people of this. These terms in question are types of deities, or titles of respect. Horned god is a type of godhead, not one specific god. So any pagan god with horns could be the horned god. Quote, some of the more well-known horned gods include Pan. It has often been charged that Catholicism is overlaid with many pagan incrustations. Catholicism is ready to accept that accusation and even make it her boast. The great god Pan, they say, is not really dead. He's baptized. Pan? and Cernuius. 
Modern witches often still worship the entities of old, like Zeus and Horus. Listen to this clip of a modern witch. The last belief is obviously that the deities are actually a higher power. They're kind of all around us, like how people kind of see other gods and goddesses, one for every single aspect of life, because obviously there's multiple deities. Below her video, she even has a list of ancient pagan gods that a Wiccan can follow. A horned god in paganism usually has an affinity with sex and carnal desires. Quote, To ancient pagans, gods with horns were related to the wild and man's primal nature. They would often be associated with fertility, the virile male embracing his carnal desires without the imposition of social codes or mores guiding his behavior. This is relevant because on October 3rd, the pro-LGBT Synod on the Youth, which is taking place in Rome, began and it happened to begin on the feast of the Roman god Bacchus. This is from the 2018 Pagan and Wiccan calendar. It shows the feast of Bacchus on October 3rd, the same day the Synod started. Here's another source saying that the feast is indeed on October 3rd. Bacchus is the Roman version of the Greek god Dionysus. They both represented orgies, sex parties, and homosexuality. The Romans borrowed their gods from the Greeks and gave them different names. So Bacchus and Dionysus are the same entity. Look how some hymns use their names interchangeably. Quote, Dionysos, bull-faced god conceived in fire. Basarius and Bacchus, many-named master of all. Also, listen to this hymn. Quote, many-named, frenzied Bacchus, bull-horned, conceived in fire. Bacchus, could definitely be described as a horned god. Not only that, but Bacchus slash Dionysus also succinctly represents the LGBT movement. Out.com even did an article about 20 LGBT Greek gods where Bacchus slash Dionysus was listed. Quote, best known as the Greek god of wine, Dionysus was also the god of intersex and transgender people. Male lovers of the god included the satyr, Ampelos, and the famously handsome Adonis. I believe the feast day of Bacchus slash Dionysus was chosen on purpose to begin the Synod on the Youth. Francis is dedicating this heretical pro-LGBT Synod to the demon Bacchus, a Roman god that represents the essence of the LGBT movement. Rome, it is pagan, and a pagan ritual is happening in plain sight. The prophesied great apostasy is happening now. He is a false shepherd and an occultist. He is using his blasphemous witch's staying to cast a demonic spell to make people more accepting of this pro-LGBT synod. Let me go to uh, Google Earth. This here is the audience hall, and right there is the roof, okay? And that roof is, uh, well, it's rather odd. It's, and there's, there's that eye. Well, okay, I, let the, I just let the cat out of the bag, but that's an eye right there. That's actually an eye of a serpent, if you look at the shape of the building. And a lot of people think, ah, oh, you're exaggerating. Well, let's go inside. There's the fangs, there's the head of the serpent, and there's his eyes. This church, the Roman Catholic Church, is a devil-worshipping church. They're doing everything they can to destroy Christianity, and the unsuspecting, loyal Roman Catholics have no clue as to what's going on here. But the symbolism is apparent. As you know, like I said earlier, they're all about the symbols. That's why they wear the certain colors or have the crucifixes or the icons or the paintings or the way the, you know, the dualism in the floors and, and the way they have their scapulars and all these different types of, you know, these items that they worship from the monstrance just to the phallic to the ionic to the phallic to the ionic where it spins around the face of, a, of the sun god Baal. The Vatican newspaper, La Osservatore Romano, has come out in support of the newest Harry Potter film, part two of The Deathly Hallows. The article did note that this movie has a much darker side compared to the others, saying that death has become a protagonist and the violence may not be suitable for everyone. The film is the end of the Harry Potter saga that has resulted in eight movies and millions of fans worldwide. This male escort has saved around 50 screenshots of all his partners in the Catholic Church. So he has evidence with these screenshots of all the requests that he was getting 
some of the requests are outrageous. I mean, a group of monks invited him to their monastery in the middle of a forest so he could be a passive partner to their sexual exploitations. And he said, well, I hope you're passive. We are free monks. We want to invite you for this gay orgy. And, and this is only one of the many things that comes out of this scandal involving this male escort. Uh, so, I mean, uh, the situation is very tense because uh, there is a possibility that this male escort might really need uh, uh, a few bodyguards to stay alive because uh, with the amount of information that he could bring out, uh, he could definitely put in trouble a lot of people. Here we're not talking only about uh, Catholic uh, priests, but also Catholic cardinals, bishops, uh, and the hierarchy of the Vatican, of course, is very scared of all this. The ancient religion of Babylon, they all have one thing in common, the sacred feminine. The sacred feminine. The sacred feminine. Ishtar, the Babylonians, Tyre, the Buddhism, Fatima, of Muhammad, Sophia, the Gnostics, Shekinah to the Kabbalist Jew, Mary to the Catholic, and Shakti to the Hindu. These all have one thing in common, the sacred feminine. And the sacred feminine is going to take you back to the source of light because the light that resides in that place that Plato talked about, you need a path to get back to that light. Listen, this is important. She is the one to take you to that light. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a guess. Tell me this morning, who do you think that light is? You remember what this subject's all about? Lucifer. He's the light bearer. The biggest gay bathhouse in Europe is owned by the Vatican. They bought it in 2008 for 30 million dollars. I'll say that again just to be clear. The Vatican spent 30 million dollars so they could own a massive gay bathhouse. They tried to keep it secret but the story emerged a few years ago and became a big scandal. Some church officials do live in the same building as the bathhouse and that was their excuse for buying it. I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. <laughs> 